Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we're going to be working from the Outlander Kitchen Cookbook because the day we're filming is the day season six comes out and I'm really excited. Um, so we're going to be making cheese savories, which are just like the gougere that we've made. I think we've made two different recipes before. Each one is slightly different, so I didn't think it would be too repetitive, um, but we also really, really love these and they're a great little snack. So these ones are uh, more of a plain gougere cheese savory. Um, they don't have any meat in them like the ones that I made from uh, Brown Sugar Kitchen. Uh, and the cheese is all going in them instead of on top, unlike the ones that I made from uh, Drinking French. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. It's really simple, comes together pretty quickly, and I'm gonna try to do it without a mixer this time. I'm gonna try to do it all by hand. We'll see. Um, in my saucier, I chose this because you have to sort of stir a lot and it doesn't have um, any corners where things can get stuck. So I really like that. Uh, I have some butter. This is unsalted butter. She doesn't say unsalted butter, but there's a lot of salt in the cheese and then we're adding a little bit of salt. So I don't think we really need salted. Um, I'm adding the salt and some mustard powder. I'm using Coleman's adding to this. And then we're also gonna add some warm water. It's still pretty warm. And now what we're gonna do is go over to the stove and bring this up to a boil, at which point we'll put our all-purpose flour in and beat it up on low heat. So we're gonna bring it to a boil on medium high. And I think we'll sort of just do a single shot where you can see what we're doing over my shoulder at the stove. So heading over to the stove. So we're getting there, we're almost to a rolling boil. I'm just gonna kind of stir to get that butter all melted. I think that's a pretty, pretty good boil right there. Um, and so we're gonna turn the heat to low. And go a little bit, a little bit above lo my lowest, which is pretty low. We're gonna add all of the flour, all purpose flour. And we're gonna stir this until it makes sort of a smooth ball of dough that comes away from the sides. She says one to two minutes. You really want a nice sturdy spoon for that. Seems pretty, pretty good to me. I would call that done. So there we go. Now I'll turn this off and we're going back over to our counter to deal with the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so she says to transfer this to a large bowl, which if you're gonna do this by hand, if not, you transfer it to your, the bowl of your stand mixer, which is much easier, but I'm gonna do this by hand, be a little bit more period ac accurate with this one. So I have my dough here, and now we're going to add, uh, oh, we're supposed to, Beat it with the wooden spoon until slightly cooled for two minutes. I don't know how long that's been, but if I keep going, I won't have the strength to do this by hand. So we're gonna start putting the eggs in. They're still pretty cold. So, um, so we're gonna add these eggs one at a time, beating until they're all absorbed. Try not to get any shells in there. Now she does say to use large eggs for this and that if you use extra large, that too much egg will make the batter deflate. Um, I usually keep, keep large eggs in my house so I didn't have to get anything special, but she says if you can't find large, use medium instead of extra large, so. But if you do use extra large and they deflate a bit, um, they'll still be delicious. They just won't be as puffed and crispy. It's 
supposed to, she says it should hang from the spoon in a ragged V. Looks good to me. Um, those are all of our eggs. And now we're going to gently fold in the cheese. I might go get a silicone spatula to help me with that, just to keep scrape down the sides and get this all mixed in um, more easily. We'll see. All right, so we are getting this cheese all incorporated and then this will be, the batter will be done. And I think that is, that's good for me. Now, um, she says to pipe these with a medium round tip and a pastry bag. But this is for my family and I don't really care how kind of ragged they look. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to try, she says you can also drop them by a, by teaspoonfuls onto your, your parchment paper. Um, they, she wants them to be about a ping pong ball size, but you can make them any size you want, even up to sort of a sandwich, a, a larger size that you can make a, a sandwich out of. Um, I'll, I want them kind of medium, so I'll do them probably about, about ping pong ball size. I think I'm going to see how well my scooper does with that instead of... Um, a teaspoon. So we get that. I might have to use more than one baking sheet for this, but I have one of them already set up. I'm going to get that in the oven first before I deal with any more. Um, they're supposed to be at least an inch apart. My oven is preheated to 425 degrees, but it's not going to stay that way the whole time. So you're supposed to cook these at um, 425 for 15 minutes, but don't open the oven until after that 15 minutes is over. Then open the oven and rotate it and then turn the oven down to 350. And if you need to do a second sheet after that, turn it back up to 425, wait till it gets there and then do the same thing. So, so I'm gonna make this, this is sort of a cookie scoop size. And we're gonna try to get them about an inch apart. So I think we can do, uh, that's a little bit more than an inch, but I think we can do about a dozen probably on this tray. I think she says it makes, let's check. She says it makes two dozen. So we'll see if we get that amount less or more. Okay, these are going in the oven for 15 minutes and I'm gonna get another tray started because I have a lot, looks like I'll make more than two dozen, doesn't matter. Um, you bake them after you turn the heat down for 10 to 15 minutes or until they're golden, lightweight and hollow feeling. So basically until they're done. That takes a little bit of um, judgment, shall we say? But I've made these before, so hopefully I'll know that they're done or not. So, On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make cheese savories or gougere from uh, Teresa Carl Sanders' Outlander Kitchen cookbook. Um, this is the third time I think we've made Gougere from our recipe. We've made them from from our recipe, from a recipe in a book that we are working on. Uh, we've made them from Brown Sugar Kitchen, which I think is my number one favorite, and that's probably because of the addition of the chopped up andouille. I really liked that one. Um, the other one we've made was also just cheese but it included cheese sort of on top as well as in the patachou. Uh, and that was from Drinking French by David Leibovitz. And then this one, 
uh, that we've made now. I think this is sort of right in the middle. I, I think I preferred the cheese to be all throughout instead of on top. Um, but they're all really good and they're all pretty easy. Uh, a pata is, I is in, in my opinion, or at least I've never had a problem with pata And I know that some people do the big, biggest thing is you need to make sure you bake it long enough so that it puffs up and stays puffed, um, that it, it, sort of hardens and crisps up enough on the outside that it doesn't collapse on itself. So cooking it enough is the trick there. And I have, you know, knock wood, never had a hard time with this. So I think it's a relatively easy pastry. This time I did make it by hand, um, as I recall, and I would not suggest you do that. It, it's a pretty thick pastry um, to stir and stir and stir. And I think I had done yoga and was already really tired that day. So it was a bad choice. But next time I will definitely be using my mixer. But I did show that it can be done with just a wooden spoon, right? Um, hours made 32 instead of the 24 in the recipe. Um, so, but that's just based on the number, the, the size that you make them. And you can make these in any size that you want. You can make them really tiny and be like a one bite thing, or you can make them larger and even make a little sandwich out of them if you'd like. Um, they don't last very long around here though. So uh, they were really good, really enjoyed them. Um, I do think I liked using a, the disher for those. Uh, so just pick a dish, disher that is that will give it give you the size you want, and there you go. Um, it's a lot easier than piping. You can pipe from just a uh, plastic zip top bag and trim off a corner and and use that as as a as a as a piping bag for things like this where it's not delicate work. Um, but I think a disher works just fine for this. So, um, yeah, I would, I would definitely suggest making these. These are a pretty basic gougere, nothing sort of extra on top or in it. Um, so it's a good place to start. If you enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and come back and watch me make something else next week.